Good afternoon. Welcome back to my channel. Don't you hate YouTubers that say that? Hi, my name's Natalie, and welcome back to my channel. No, no, that's not going to happen. All right. Just making sure that I've got my comments on. Hey, Danny. Just the two of us today. Oh, no, somebody else is watching. There we go. There's two, three of us. Three of us playing along today. It's a bit nice and intimate. Hey, Jen. Ah, everybody's there. All right. So, I'm going to um, create a little art journal page today. Again, I'm going to be working out of my Scrap Effects junk journal. Hi, Karen. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I'm not going to make you buy all the things because I'm not showing you anything new. I just wanted to utilise the time to make something pretty for myself. I'm not going to show you anything that you don't already know i'm just gonna make something that i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do so um anyway so scrap effects junk journal so i'm gonna be playing with this one hey cheryl um and i want to i'm gonna show you the new one actually okay karen sorry i lied darling okay. uh, this is the um new one that came out last week this is the limited edition one and limited edition, I'm hoping to get more. So this is the one that has got, hello Renee, um, lots of different pages. So it's got a manila folder, it's got black pages, heavy denim, music paper, something blue, paper bag. So I love these junk journals because it's making me think outside my comfort zone. Um, book paper, and then this is the page that is the cool one. It's got that lovely die cut through it. Um, and then it's got that die cut as well on craft. Um, and yeah, so they came in. I think they've now sold out because I had to keep one for myself. Because, um, you know, that's how I roll. But um, hey, Sharon. But um, I'm going to order them back in in the next day or so anyway. So... Very, very cool. But today I'm just going to be working in my lace junk journal. So this is one that I have worked in over the last couple of days and for the last couple of months doing a few pages here and there. Um, I have gone and taken a few things off the shelf and a few bits and pieces. And this is one of the pages I've done before. So if I'll give you a bit of a flick through for those who haven't seen it before. Um, so yeah, it's made up of lots of different components. So this one is the, you know, the covers and envelope. Then it's got this gorgeous little lace bit um, cut out here, which is something that you that's unique to this company. I've done this one before, which is the using some tissue paper and some stamps with the little baby tag on the side. A couple of pages I haven't yet worked on. Um, the transparency page. I know exactly what I'm going to do on this page but I haven't got around to doing it yet. Um, then we go into the page that I did on Friday, maybe, using the rice paper, the new Dina Wakeley stencils, the Natalie May scrapbooking stamp, um, bits and pieces. This is a painty page I have done you, uh, in a previous class. Um, another one using collage papers, one coming up that I'm not supposed to show you, and there you go. So, um, really loving it. So, I'm going to work this time in the, on the last two pages of this journal. Um, oh, I, I must mention also, this on the front is one of the rice papers that are available from Scrap Effects. Um, you'll find them online under collage paper. And they, um, I've just used gel medium to cover it. So I've given it a bit of a, a bit of a head start there. Okay, so um, this is the page I'm going to do. So this has got the rice paper, rice paper. Why do I keep saying that? This has got the lace cutout on it, um, which is trans, 
like got the cut through there. I have pre gessoed as well. Um, I'm just going to stick some baking paper behind it because I will probably overpaint and make a bit of a mess. And I don't want to have this stick through anything else. So what I like about putting baking paper underneath is that it won't stick to anything. So, um, all right, so you have to excuse if there's a bit of background noise. Okay. Jessica is um, making as much noise as she possibly can as she's picking orders for you today. So, um, excuse me while I yell at my teenager um, in public because, you know, that's a thing. Okay, what have I pulled off the shelf? I have pulled off the shelf the Cathedral Windows rice paper. I have pulled off the shelf the new rice paper as well, the new collage paper that is called something. That's, um, sorry, I threw the packet. Oh, here it is. Art Inspiration. Art inspiration. Um, I also have here to use in front of me some transparency wings. We're going to have a play with those with some alcohol ink, which is the special of the day. Dun, 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 dun. Drum roll. And some stamps from Stampers Anonymous and some stencils as well. Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to start off with my scissors and I'm going to cut out. So based on the cathedral windows, they need to be connected to an edge because it's only half. It would just look ridiculous if it was floating in the middle of the page. Do I want to use the big one? Or do I want to use the little one? Let's use the little one. And I'm just going to do that. So, yes, I did pre-gesso my surface. The reason I have pre-gessoed my surface is because I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to put down on my surface yet. So, by, pre by preparing the paper, I am getting it ready for whatever is going to go on. So... If I decide that I'm going to use acrylic paint, which is probably the way I'm going to go, then it's going to be perfect. If I decide that I want to use Magicals, the surface is prepared as well. Because I'm working on an envelope and a piece of cardstock, I need to make sure that my paper is protected, sorry, is um, sealed and non porous. Because papers are all porous, they will have all different levels of um, being porous, because that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that the paper isn't going to soak in the liquid that you're putting on it. So I'm just tearing off another corner here, and I'm going to use gel medium to stick that on. And here is my gel medium. So gel medium is an adhesive. It is a glue. The impasto gel medium is the one that I like to use. Um, I'm going to put it straight down onto my surface. Stick on my collage paper, my rice paper, to make sure all my edges are stuck down. And then I'm going to go over the top. So I love this little collage brush from Tim Holtz. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of those in stock at the moment. But what I do have in stock is something that Jessica is going to pass to me. Can she read my mind? Yes, she can. Excellent. This is an alternative to, um, to this brush. They work brilliantly for gel medium and gesso. So um, very inexpensive. Perfect for this purpose. Might be sold out, I'm not sure. Um, I'll be having a few. I'll be getting some more in very shortly if it is sold out. Um, the next thing I like to do is I like to polish off that gel medium just to make sure that I've got no air bubbles underneath. 
Now, it doesn't have to be sopping wet. You can see that I'm really spreading it out. Stick it on. Then straight over the top and polishing it with my fingers just to give a nice smooth surface. Polishing it with my fingers also makes it dry quicker as well because I'm taking off any excess except for that big goober. Um, so that's working kind of nice. And then you need to wash your brush straight away because, or wrap it in a baby wipe, which is what I'm gonna do rather than putting water in it. Because you don't want to, if it dries on your brush, it's gonna dry solid. So I just wrap it in a baby wipe and pop it off to the side. So um, Impasto Gel Medium is my go-to, is my favorite one because it has a little bit of body to it. So the, um, the Dina Wakeley Heavy Gel Medium is the other one I have in stock. Maybe, I can't see from here, but it doesn't Ultra matter. Thick. Ultra Thick, that also works quite well. Um, and will um, will dry with body as well. So that's almost dry, which is fantastic. Um, what am I going to do next? Do I want to put down any collage? No, I don't. But I am going to get a little paint on. So what am I thinking I'm going to do with paint? Go for something a bit bright today. I'm inspired by a couple of incredibly creative women who um, are Australian crafters and these girls know how to work with colour. So I'm talking about Lisa Oxley, uh -huh. I'm talking about Jen Hall, I'm talking about these girls who know how to colour like, know how to include colour and work with colour like nobody's business. Um, and I'm going to work with Dilusions and Dina Wakeley paints. I'm going to use a combination of both of them today. Um, sorry, just chat amongst yourselves. Can't decide on the colours. Um, and I'm going to go from there. So, Australia has a fabulous crafting community and I love community. I think it's super important to um, support each other, work with each other and work alongside other crafters. That's like epic important. Um, okay, see now I'm just fluffing around. So I have got here lemon zest and I'm going to just whack it on. Give it a squirt. And I'm sticking with some vertical strokes. Um, I'm not going to paint over my cathedral. I'm just going to work with a little bit of colour. And I'm going to do the baby wipe technique, which is taking a little bit of paint off with a baby wipe. This is a super easy, super fun technique. Now I've got yellow on my baby wipe, so I'm just going to do that and transfer a little over there. So the stencil I'm using here is my own personal stencil that I have designed. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing with a little orange now. Orange is a little bit brighter, so I'm not putting as much on. And I'm just gonna do that. And I'm keeping my strokes the same. I'm making sure that all of my strokes are going exactly the same way. And I apologise to any of you who I'm can sorry. who can hear my dogs arguing outside. They have decided to play, which is doing my head in. I can hear them out there mucking around. Um, okay, bit of pink. So the Dina Wakeley paint is a heavier bodied paint. So this time, and I'm not washing my brush because I'm lazy, um, but the Dina Wakeley paint is a more heavy body paint, so it spreads a little bit differently 
and it moves around on the page a little differently as well. So exactly the same thing. <laughs> I just noticed that Cherie and Sharon are both there. A couple of girls from New Zealand. Watching in, tuning in. Are you guys still in lockdown over there? What's happening in New Zealand? I've spent the last four days out here in the studio and I've got no idea what is going on in the world at the moment. Just bring some more colour around. I do like this hot pink. This is bubblegum pink. So I might just pop a bit of bubblegum up there. So look at that, bringing friends together. Gotta love it. All right, that's a lot of pink, but you know what? Let's commit to it. So as you can see, I'm doing what's called a, what I call a dry brush technique, which is just moving the color around. So because I've gone quite strong down here and up here, what I want to do is I want to continue. Oh, you're on level two. Ah. Oh. Um, what I want to do is I want to continue to just wipe a little off with my baby wipe to tone that back. Beautiful. On, on the way here with some nice bright colour. And then just stamping with it over here is transferring that paint. So the reason why it transfers and it's not soaking in is because I have used a... Um, gesso background I've got gesso in there and I'm at this point I'm not afraid to use a bit of color and I can tone it back later with um, white gesso if I need to so I'm just cleaning my brush off now just taking off that excess pink because I need to add something else and I've changed my mind it's not going to be blue lagoon it's going to be turquoise So totally inspired here by seeing some of the other creatives around the industry at the moment. Um, and I really love this sort of lovely, bright, punchy colour that we are getting out of this page. So now I'm going to use my stencil here and pop it in a couple of different shapes. So you'll notice that I'm not pushing the aqua up to the orange at all. I'm leaving some space between it because I don't want to make it muddy. Um, and I'm going to sneeze, so just bear with me a second. Bless you. Oh, gosh, excuse me. Because that always happens when you're doing a live Facebook. But you see, I'm balancing the colour, so now I want to take the colour up here. So this is just the, you know, learning the art of restraint a little bit. It's not always about getting your whole page completely coloured in, in paint. You can leave some white space. You can leave a little bit of um, white or if you think that you have not left enough white space, you can go back over with gesso later and add your own elements of white so now I'm just going to dry brush through here so dry brush means I don't have a sopping wet paintbrush because I'm just taking off any excess paint onto there beautiful and I'm going to pop some of that down here as well. And fingers are good. All right. So we're on the right track here. Um, what am I going to do next? So my, my cathedral window is still here. My um, paper is up in that top corner. Um... Don't quite know why I forgot to do this area down here, but let's just clean my brush off. 
So what's making it work as well is the vertical strokes, okay? So I'm keeping my strokes consistent. Alrighty, clean brush, clean water. Because I don't know what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I also pulled out... Actually, I might do a little bit of stamping. Um, I'm going to use my off the grid rubber stamp. This is a red rubber stamp. So for those of you who have seen this, I'm gonna show you how to use it. Um, totally just threw something on the floor. All right, so I like this because it is a nice simple shape. Um, I've got some black archival ink here and I'm just going to get a little bit of paint, uh, ink on my stamp. What I want to do is I want to use it as a flexible stamp, meaning I want to add a non-perfect shape around my page. And I'm not going to re-ink, I'm going to make sure that I've got like a grey tone because that is that off-stamped look. So let me bring that up to camera to show you how that looks. All right, and up the top there and down the bottom. All right, so I really quite like, um, of course I like it, I bloody designed it. Um, <laughs> I, um, I really like that sh that sh shape and that's why I have designed that stamp okay so that one is called the off the grid stamp pop that aside now I've got this circle shape here um, I've tied in the stamping with the cathedral so the cathedral windows um, rice paper has got that that grid and that's why I've used the grid stamp. The Cathedral Windows paper has also got a circle, a couple of circles in here. So I also want to add some circles somewhere else. A uh, couple of things I can do. I have got a, a compass stamp from Stampers Anonymous. Um, and I've got the Game Wheel one from Stampers Anonymous. And these are on their way in. I have been waiting since July... 17th for this order from Stampers Anonymous and I can tell you right now how impressed I am about the US postal system but they will be in soon so keep an eye out um, on the website and I'm just going to use the game wheel stamp but I don't want to use it as a solid black so instead of using a solid black what I want to do is I want to stamp or ink up my stamp and then I want to ink it up stamp it onto a piece of paper towel first to take off any excess and then I can put it on my page and then it becomes like a it, it just fits in better it's not going to be so full-on and that is what I'm looking for I'm after that second third sort of stamped image um, Perfect. Um, beautiful. So I'm going to pop that one aside. Now I'd like a little bit more white in my page. So the way to do that is I'm just going to use white gesso because I don't have any white paint handy. So I'm just going to use some Liquitex white gesso and pop that, put a little bit here. And just taking off any excess water from my brush because I want to do that dry brush technique again. And you can see I'm just kind of spreading it out so that I don't have heaps on my, on my brush. So I'm just thinning down that background paint. So how's everybody's Sunday going? Anyone doing anything exciting? No 
nobody's doing anything exciting watching me. Okay, well, fair enough. Okay, I'll pay that. Been to soccer, now relaxing. Nice. Hey, Eleanor. Um, that's what Sundays are for, being a mum taxi. Yeah, see, that sucks. Uh, no, took a, <laughs> we took, took a 20 week old puppy to puppy school. Oh, oh, we don't miss those days at all. You don't. I don't. I never did it. Jessica took the dogs to puppy school. Well, she took one dog and clearly that shows. One and a half. One and a half dogs didn't take Ollie all the way through puppy school. All right. So just a little bit of white on there. I'll bring that up to camera so you can see. Has just toned it back just a fraction. All right, what else can we do? Sharon, Tracy's got the family coming over. My baby is turning 25. Well, happy birthday to your baby. Doesn't sound like a baby, but I'm hearing you on the baby thing. Okay. I think I want to add, I'm going to add some alphabets now. So I've got, I've cracked out the Dina Wakeley stencil again. Do I want to do that? Yeah, stuff it, why not? Let's put in another colour. Let's introduce... Let's introduce fresh lime. Now, I'm going to do this with... I'm not going to do this with a paintbrush. I'm going to do this with a makeup wedge with this dirty one off my desk. So this is just like a makeup sponge and I'm going to get it on there like that. I actually like this side better. I don't know why. And I like that it's putting it on, but it's also pulling it off a little bit. it with a little bit of something up the top there and I've run out of paint. And it's added another layer of colour a little bit more dimension and a bit of a pop to my page as well. Um, all right, so what else have I pulled out? All right, I pulled those leaves out, didn't I? Not leaves, what are they? Wings. So these are the acrylic wings and I found um, some more Tim Holtz dead people because I love these guys. Um. And I think I might use the guy with the dog. I, I'll tell you why I like him. These are the ones about the right sort of height that I was after. Um, so a couple of things going on here. This guy is great, but you can see that he's got, he needs to put his foot on something. He's got his knee up and bent, and I am not wanting to put anything in there at this stage for him to put his foot on. So he's, he's off the books. Um, this guy here, good height, good size, but same thing. He needs to be putting his, he's resting his arm on something. Um, and his body language kind of says that he should be on this side, whereas I want my focal point to go on this side. So he's out of there. Um, this guy here, same thing. He's a little bit smaller, got his hand in his pocket. So his body language should be making him go on this page so he's looking into the page um not out of the page so he's out of the question so i'm going to go with this guy do i like the dog 
I don't love the dog. The dog's gone. And I'm going to cut that off before you all go, no, no, don't cut the dog off. Cut the dog. Dog's gone. Look at that. You'd never even know that he was there. So he's going to go there. That's my thinking anyway. So the next thing I want to do is he needs some wings. I've got these wings here. I love these big ones. I love those ones. They're too big. These guys here are perfect. So the transparencies are brilliant. And the best thing about them is... Because they are on an acetate, they're on a transparency, we can colour them with alcohol inks, which are the special of the day. The daily deal. Um, all right, so I don't know what colour now to do them in, but I'm thinking I'm going to do aqua. So, like a... a a light blue. So I'm going to pull out a couple here. Aquamarine, mermaid, and a bit of green in there as well. All right. Now, because I haven't done this in ages, I don't know whether or not to do it on the front or the back. So, let's do a tester first. If you're not sure, which of the wings do I like the least? This one. So, if you're not sure, test it first. Because I really love these and I don't want to mess it up. So, I'm going to... And with the transparencies, it's printed on one side and not on the other. So let me just do that on one side. So that's the side that it's not printed on. And that's looking pretty good. Um, and I can wipe it off straight away so I'm not wasting it. And then on the other side, so this is on the side that it's printed on. Oh, that's a bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Oh no, there we go. Alright, so I think I'll do it on the back of the wings, let it dry and then cut it out. So the back of my wings, I will turn that over. Um, I really need a paintbrush to spread that out. Here we go. So this colour that I'm using is aquamarine um, and that's looking pretty good. Put more of that one on there since I just totally used the wrong colour. Or did I? And then I might put some green in the middle because I've got green on my page as well. Now this green is going to come out super fast. Oh no, there we go. And I wouldn't want to pick any other colour because, like I was saying in the last video, when you mix them together and the colours um, and the colours are opposite on the colour wheel, you're going to make mud. And I probably shouldn't stuff around with it too much or I'll get to something that I don't like the look of and I can't take it back because, you know, that's what we do. And I don't want to hit it with the heat gun to dry it off because it will probably melt the acetate, which is not ideal. So when we turn it over, we get these gorgeous wings. 
And of course I adjusted one side but not the other, which means I need to do that. And I should have left it alone, but you know, that's what we do. So there's no reason why you can't can't colour your um, acetate to suit. All right, lids back on while that is drying. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's paint him. Let's give him a bit of colour. Um, normally, I would use Copic markers, but that would actually involve me getting up and out of the chair to go and find Copic markers. So I'm going to use my um, stamping acrylic block here and I'm going to use a pink this time. I've got some geranium and a little yellow as well because they're the two other colors that I've got in my background. Um, do I want to use blue? Maybe not, okay. So using my paintbrush here, I'm going to give him a bit of yellow on his jacket or a lot of yellow as the case may be. Um, And now I'm just tapping it onto some paper towel just lightly off camera just to tone that back a bit because that's a lot. Because, <laughs> you know, why do things by halves when you can go the whole damn hog, right? Um, okay, let's give him some pink Dax. And then just off camera, sorry, I'm just tapping that off onto a piece of paper towel to take the intensity out of it. But his hat, on the other hand be pink baby so because the Tim Holtz um, dolls uh, Tim Holtz dead people as I like to call them have a gloss finish to them alcohol ink sits on them really well um, the other thing that's yeah, or Copic markers work on them quite well the um, it's probably just ruined my paintbrush, but if I spray it with hand sanitizer, it will actually come up okay. All right, there we go. Now he's got a little bit of color to him. He's a bit cuter. A little bit camp, but you know. Um, lids on. Before we go any further, because you know how good I am at knocking things over on my desk. Put these babies away. So the um, the alcohol inks are 15% off until uh, the end of today. And next, I'm hoping for about a week or so's time, there's going to be a new shipment of alcohol inks in stock. The new colors are coming out that they have just announced and I'm going to be doing a top up. So stay tuned for those to come in and I'm just gonna clean my brush before that goes really bad. Um, but yeah, so stay, stay tuned for the next lot to come in because I don't know what, um, when that's going to be. And Jessica, as she's picking orders here, tells me that I'm almost out of stock of a lot of the alcohol inks. So, yep. um, how there you go. So Jessica's picking them away here and most of your orders will be going out tomorrow. Your local ladies, I will endeavour to have yours ready, but you will receive a Facebook message or an email when your order is ready for collection. Um, but please don't just show up at my door and expect to pick up your order because there's quite a few orders to get through, okay? So you just need to bear with me just a little on that. So the wings, I'm just going to cut this guy out and um, I can't tell you anything exciting while I'm doing this. 
What else is there? I've got some nice kits online. I'm um, working on some more kits at the moment. I'm working on some Minte Christmas cards. I have got all the materials here for a Simple Stories mini binder album using the Merry and Bright collection from Simple Stories. Um, I just need to take a week off because yeah, that's not going to happen. But I need to take, um, I just need to take some time to create that little mini album. And then it's, it can be like a December daily or it can be a little mini album to put your favourite photographs in. Um, plenty of options there for you. How good does that look? Alcohol inks on acetate. Winning! Jessica's rolling her eyes at me because she knows she's embarrassed by me. I give up. She gives up. That's okay. Oh, hey, Liliana. Ah, from Miami. Well, wow. that's one place I would love to go. Not this year. Uh, maybe next year, but that's okay. Uh, maybe not next year. Maybe not next year. I don't know when we can international travel. Yeah. I was really hoping to go to Creativation in January, but um, that ain't happening. Nope. They're going to be having a virtual Creativation. Um, maybe we'll have to plan for 2022, I think. But um, what time is it in... <laughs> what time is it in Miami at the moment? It is currently here in Adelaide, quarter past two, nearly in the afternoon. Is that quarter past two or quarter past one? Quarter past two. Quarter past two. Looking good. 12.47. AM or PM? That would be PM. Must be PM. AM. Ooh. AM. You're a night owl. All right, so here we go. Here's my wings. So they have now, they're going to sit like this. I am beautiful. They're going to sit like this. Loving it. Okay, back to this art journal page since I've got totally sidetracked by that. Hey, Sandra, how are you? Lovely. Um, okay. So for those of you who are just tuning in now, I am working on my Scrap Effects Junk Journal. I have used gesso to coat my paper, to seal my paper first up. I have then used some collage paper, rice paper, uh, cathedral windows up the top and down the side here. We then popped some paint on as well and have added some stamping. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I know what my focal point is going to be. It's going to be this guy with his wings, which look freaking awesome. Hey, Chrissy. Um, and before I do that, though, I need to add a little black. A little black baby. So I'm going to use the Cabbage Rose stencil from Stencil Girl, I think. Well, I kind of have to because it's the only one I put out in front of me, actually, truth be told. Um, now, I can't decide if I want to go black or night. Night, which is the Dina Wakely go-to colour. Um, but I might just do a combination of both. So sometimes when you're not sure if black is going to work, pop some night down on your palette as well, just in case. Um, black can be scary, but what am I going to use to put it on with? Where'd my sponge go? Jess, where's my sponge? I don't know. Are you freaking kidding? How did I lose that? What colour is it? My little wedge thing. What colour is it? I don't know what colour it was. Green. I used green on it last. Stop looking. I found it. Okay. So. Freaking hell. 
Um, so yeah, night is more of a navy blue. It's a much, much nicer color to work with than black. So it can be a little bit more life-saving. Um, so I need to add some black elements here. I need to add a bit of a frame around the edges and I want to do that with black. And I want to add a little, use a bit of this here. So I want to pop some down here in black. And, oh, <laughs> sidetracked because Trevor just bought me a gin and tonic. Um, husband of the year award. Best husband ever. Mm. Oh, all right. All right, I think we all need to give Trevor a round of applause. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get that. Oh, that's really nice. Get start with that um, blue and I'm going to sponge it on. So now if I'm going in here and I'm not really sure, then the blue, I can always darken it up with black. I was thinking it might have been a bit early for a gin and tonic, but apparently not. <laughs> oh, does it get any better? Live Facebook, gin and tonic. Sunday afternoon. I've been dehydrated. I bought myself a dehydrator. Um, and then I, people were giving me shit saying I'm turning into Martha Stewart. Not turning into Martha Stewart, FYI. <laughs> but um, the I've, I've dehydrated some blood oranges. And... They look really, really cool in my gin and tonic, and they taste really, really nice. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just sponging out that flower, and I'm gonna work around the edges, adding a little bit of black, and I'm gonna be adding some doodling and a little bit more stamping over these areas. So the, oh, hang on so the black doesn't look so full on and out of place. Um, just a little in and around this edge. So using the stencil to create a bit of a shape. And then I'm gonna pop some black and some night over this area here. Oh, lost my comments on the screen. Oh, here we go. Annalise is saying, never too early for a gin and tonic. Oh, yesterday I could have begged to differ on that one. Um, <laughs> a little seedy yesterday. But that was my own doing from Friday night. So I'm going to come in here. I don't want to go over the top of my beautiful cathedral windows, but I want to give it a little... little bit of a an edge going on might go in on the join up here you know what I'm being a bit indecisive and I should just take some of my own advice and just bloody get it done and because I'm talking through it I'm not concentrating so just chat amongst yourselves for a second while I listen to the thoughts in my head try and make sense of what I'm up to here just add because I've gone up here and it's quite dark if I use a wet baby wipe now I can take a little bit of color off by just swiping it over the top and that's worked out quite well um, get my little 
ball dog clip out the way there. So like I was saying to those of you um, earlier who have watched all the way through, the techniques that I'm using today are nothing new. I am greatly inspired here by creatives here in South Australia who, oh, in it, sorry, in Australia, who are just the best, amazing, most creative people who work so well with colour. So um, Lisa Oxley, if you are out there, you rock my world, but you know that anyway. Um, Jen Hall, she is just a rock star with colour. Um, so for those of you who don't know these two creatives, look them up. Um, the incredibly talented Michelle Logan, who has designed lots and lots of elements for scrap effects. Um, look her up as well. Big shout out to you girls. Keep on creating in this industry and doing your thing. Um, Neve Bailey, who has been doing some amazing tutorials of late as well and some little mini classes. Um, so the Australian paper crafting industry is just growing and turning into something really, really awesome. Um, we all inspire each other. We all work alongside each other to keep this, this industry alive. And I think that that's super important here in Australia, as well as all across the world. Um, we should be lifting each other up, not tearing each other down, uh, which happens a little, a little too often, I think. Um, so there we go. All right, so I'm on the right track here. I've created a bit of a frame here. I've gone a bit into my window on the side here just because I wanted it a little bit darker there. I'm going to take some depth up in here. And the black, black gives dimension. Black gives in, um, black gives dimension. Black gives, a, give it, gives it a good big punch, big punch of, um, oomph is what I'm looking for. Um, all right, let me just wipe that off before I send it flying. Um, all right, how am I going for time, Jess? Nearly an hour. Holy shit. All right. So I'm going to do some stamping of words now before I put my man on, my little camp man I created. So black archival ink, and I have just got a little stamp here which says something that I love. Lisa Oxley, yes, that's the name that you need to be looking up. She does some amazing work. Um, very, very cool. Started off as a scrapbooker, now one of the most creative people I know. Um, Jen Hall still doing a painty hands, I believe is her current handle or her business name, I should say. Um, very creative people. So what I'm doing with this stamp is just creating a little, um, a little shadowing. And I hate that I have done that crooked because I'm not concentrating. Sorry. And I've got my other one here that I love. So I have ordered in, like I was saying before, ordered in a whole heap of Stampers Anonymous stamps. And I am desperately waiting for USPS to deliver. Um, and they are not doing that at all at the moment. Uh, I did, did the order on the, like I said, I think the... 17th or 16th of July and it's still on the way so there will be a heap of stamps like these good old red rubber um, on wooden blocks on the way in I think it's because the USPS in America is uh, having some funding issues USPS in America are having some funding issues Jessica tells me um, okay so with my little Tim Holtz doll here um, I'm going to just give it a black border to take off that white edge and I'm just using a Pentel black permanent texture because I really hate seeing the edges 
on papers and I, I, I just don't like the finish. So I tend to do this a little bit. Takes off that white edge and helps it merge into the page better. Drink break. I know, it's so unprofessional, isn't it? All right. Oh, I just did that. Oh, see you, Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, darling. Um, okay. What the hell did I just grab that was covered in black paint? Okay, so he's going to go here. And he's going to go about there. Um couple of things that I need to fix first of all that are bothering me are I need to tone down some of that black up the top there so I have got and something else that's bothering me is one two and I don't have a third thing here a third stencil it's just the little things it's that perfection, not perfection, but that, that balance that I continually yearn for and look for. And this is, a, this is the bonus, is if you don't like something and you think it, something's not quite right, you can go over the top of it because it's just paint. It's just an art journal, for goodness sakes. You're not tattooing your forehead or your firstborn. Um, it's just paint. So it's it's okay to make mistakes and and mess it up a bit. Um, it's not a drama. You shouldn't stress too much over it. All right. Says me who's stressing over it. But you can go back and you can fix it. Um, okay. Stamping on that side. I love that. Trevor's earning his keep today. So now he's bought me a gin and tonic. He's taking the clothes off the line. He's done three loads of washing. That's better. Totally earning his keep. Someone might have to marry that man one day. Or I hope my next husband's as good as he is, I should say. Okay. I'm so much funnier in real life, honestly. Um, working, 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 working. I want to now stick down my guy. So he's going to be going here. So before I do that, I'm just giving myself some clean fingers because I need to pick up my acetate wings and they look too pretty to stuff up. So, clean hands. I've got my puzzle glue out, which is from Poland. And I'm going to put a dob of glue here. And I'm being a bit generous with my glue. And making sure that my pretty wings are the same way. I might even just put some glue on the back of him first and then pop these into position. How good do those wings look? Now, did anybody else notice what I didn't do yet? What I forgot to do then? Yep. 
Yep, I only glued the wings and didn't put glue anywhere else. So, because I'm focusing on not messing that up. Totally forgot. Totally forgot. So, holding that in place, just going to lift his body up a little and pop some glue underneath. All right. And now I'm up to the good bit, which is the doodling. And the white pen mark. So I have a Pintor fine white pen and I have a Pilot Pintor fine black. Give them a good shake. He still needs to be grounded on something. He still needs to be sitting on something. Um, so I'm going to also be putting a title across here in a moment. But I, before I do that, I just wanted to get a few little scribbles on to my page. And a few little marks. So mark making maketh the man. So I'm just going to add a few little crosses up the top here. And it's all about the layers. Um, and if you put it on there and you think, oh, that's a, probably a little bit darker than it should be while it's wet because it is a paint pen, just dab it, tone it back a little. I do really love using the Pintor paint pens. They are my go-to pen um, for art journaling because I have found that they have just a little bit better pigment than Posca's. And they work almost 100% of the time. Unlike Posca pens, which I will argue with again and again and again and again, I find that they work better. Um, all right, so what am I gonna put here? Art makes the soul grow, feed your soul, art attack, nourish yourself, create art. Art completes me, broken crayons, paint your own reality, fearless. Dream it, believe it, achieve it, think positive. Wow, so many, so many positive words. Let's just say I will start with oh, a pair of scissors. Let's just start at the top. So these little collage sheets are only three bucks. Bargain. You will find them on the website under collage paper or under scrap effects. Um, lots and lots of different brands. Hey, Sharon, you're back. Oh, hey, Gabby. Look, Gab, semi-clean nails. Oh, Jess, stop kicking the table. Pull that table back, please. Um, yeah, semi-clean nails. I need to get a nail fixed. Jessica's got broken nails. It's the big issue. Um, so, yes, for those of you who don't know, or if you are in Adelaide and you want a kick-ass nail technician, Gabby's your girl. All right, so art makes the soul grow. Damn right it does. So I'm going to cut that there and I'm going to use that gel medium to stick that down with. So there's my gel medium brush. Um, and I'm just taking off the excess gel medium grab the tub <laughs> um, grab the tub and I'm actually going to put it on here and then put it onto my page because I want it to go edge to edge 
but I don't want to paint over the top of everything else. So he's standing on that title. And then I will add some paint and merge that in maybe, or I don't know what I'll do to that yet. And do the same thing again. Are you wearing bright colours today? <gasps> Rebecca, nobody's supposed to know. I, <laughs> I am not wearing black for the first time, maybe this year, yeah. I am wearing a, here you go. I'm wearing a tie-dyed top that I bought from a kid's clothing store. Um, a teenage clothing store. Uh, and I only bought it because it was pretty and I bought it like three months ago and I haven't worn it probably because it's got white on it um, and yeah it, it's not me at all um, but yeah I am wearing something that's not black to the point where Trevor goes my god are you okay what are you wearing today so all right, so how do I blend that in? I can either make a frame out of it, which I think I might do that rather than try and blend it. So I'm making a panel, making a feature of the title because that's what it is. It's a feature. I've got my focal point, which is my man here with the pink shorts. And now I'm gonna go and add some doodling in my white pen. So this is where we're at at the moment. And doodling is just exactly that. You want to be adding in some points of interest for your eye to go to. And I'm giving it some direction, giving it a little shape. What is that naughty dog of yours doing, Jessica? I can hear Dad growling at him. Um, so yeah, we are in the process of picking and packing orders. Um, thank you very much for your support over the last four days. Um, this crafting industry has been going through a really tough time here in Australia, as you know, because of the not being, obviously the, the, the apocalypse and whatnot but the crafting industry the craft and quilt fairs have not been running of course and that's what i would have been doing this year is going and doing the craft and quilt fairs around australia and the craft alive events around australia and doing you know bringing the products to you doing demos for you guys and doing little mini classes face to face so um thank you for supporting and, and watching all of these little live Facebooks and doing it this way. Um, please go over to the Craft Alive website and look on the exhibitors hall because there are other little businesses that need your support as well. My beautiful craft wife, Fiona, um, for those of you who don't know, Fiona, is, Fiona from Fine French Linen is my craft wife. For the last two years, we've been traveling together around Australia her business is not crafting at all. She has been a, a woman, a single woman traveling alone, and I have been traveling as a single person as well. So we have been sharing a hotel room uh, across the country. So having a craft wife and having a, a best friend in the industry is, is fantastic. So Fiona's business is, she has got these incredibly gorgeous, gorgeous French fabrics for quilters and the most amazing pajamas that are a fancy name that I can't say. And Fiona's, that she's actually got those on special this weekend for $50 off. And I have the pajamas and they are so very, very comfortable. So um, I highly recommend supporting if you are in a position to support some of the other businesses that need your help. Um, we are all very, very grateful. Um, and 
a little bit of love goes a long way. So I can't thank you enough. If you go back through my Facebook, you'll actually find a link to Fiona's Facebook page that I shared a couple of days ago um, about her sale that she's having. And I think I may have even shared the pajama post. So please um, go through and have a bit of a look back and and look for Fiona. Um, so I could sit here quite easily all day and just scribble and draw and waffle and carry on. But like seriously, you guys have got a million things that you could be doing instead. Um, I will finish up. Um, take some photographs, link some products into my page. Um, and I just will yeah, finish that off and go from there. So um, thank you very, very much to everybody. You've still got a few hours left of 15% off stamps and stencils, 15% off of paper collections. You've still got 15% off of all Lindy's Gang products, which is about the only product that I haven't demoed this weekend. Oh, hang on. No, I did do sprays on Thursday. So um, that is also around uh, all at 15% off as well. And I have another big order of Lindy's coming in soon. Um, it's upside down. All right, let me... Bring this up to camera, give you a close-up, and oh, I'm loving the shit out of this. Let's have a look. Oh, I think I like it. You think or you know? I know I like it. That's much better. So there you go. But it's all of those little details that bring it all and tie it all together um so yeah if you are wanting to take advantage of the um the specials please do that uh and keep an eye out on facebook for my posts coming up so that you can know when the cutoff time is going to be for um combining postage um at the moment you've still got a couple of hours left but we are going to be cutting off soon. Um, so you can add to a previous order just by going to the checkout and selecting no judgment, um, which is probably about my favorite thing I've ever put on my website. I just think that's absolutely hysterical. Um, so that is it from me. Thank you so very much for um, joining me over this last few days of live, live Facebooks. I absolutely loved every single one that I've done, um, even with yesterday morning's hangover. And I, <laughs> thank you, Jessica, for your <coughs> impromptu background coughing there. Sorry. You don't get to judge me because you're 17. Um, so... <laughs> it was a good night. It was, like a, it was a lovely night. Um, but, yeah, I'm... All oh, happy days here, guys. Um, all right. I'm going to sign off. Um, <laughs> thank you. And um, cheers to Sunday. Cheers to making pretty things. Cheers to your support. Um, cheers to the Australian paper craft and um, art industry. We are a small group of people who need to support each other and share the love around. So thank you very much. Um, wash your hands, kiss your kids. Um, good night, Liliana in Miami. Um, nataliemay.com.au and I will chat to you all soon. Bye.